G'day, Nick from AustralianNativeBee.com. Today I want to share a little hint with you. With the popularity of stingless beekeeping going up, lots of people doing shows and demonstrations, things like that, and lots and lots of people doing rescues from logs and water meters, I think it's time to share this little tip. Uh, a lot of people think um, I share everything. I don't share everything. I keep some things secret. But today I'd like to share something because I believe that uh, it's important um, for saving a lot more stingless bees Why people are doing transfers. This little technique I call bee floating and it's something that I've done for several years. Sometimes I use a strainer, sometimes I use a branch, but it's utilising the hairs that are on the bee's body in order to sort them from uh, structure, pollen and honey. So I'll share this little tip with you today. Hopefully you can utilise it yourself at home uh, with your transfers and your stingless bees. I hope you enjoy. All right, I wanted to show you this little tip. This is a uh, post doing a water meter colony lift or a log or something like that. And you're often left with a lot of honey pots and things you um, have taken out of the colony. Now, if you were to just squeeze out all the honey and take the honey, you would have honey for a day. If you were to preserve and save the bees out of this, you would get honey uh, from those bees for the duration of their life and they will go on to help the other colony. So obviously the bees are more important than the honey at this point. Now this is a little tip I want to show you for getting the bees out of a messy sort of uh, thing like this where you've thrown everything into a bucket that you don't want in the hive and I'll show you how to get the bees out of the propolis and pollen and things like that. Now there are some dead bees uh, coming to the surface here but the bees get a little air pocket of air underneath them as this bucket filled with water more and more bees are floating to the surface. Now I've got this little uh, old strainer I use for this. And I just pick up the bees like that. Then what I'm going to do is tap them out onto a screen behind me here so that they can dry out. All right, let's have a closer look. You can see here, if I collect all these bees, just tap them out over there. Now, bees that have been in this state, it's a little bit traumatic for them. Once they dry out, they will join your colony. Another one's floated to the surface. It's just a matter of standing here for about 20 minutes or so and collecting all those bees. Every bee is a valuable bee. Over here is where I've been dumping the bees onto a mesh cloth so that they can dry out. And you can see that it's just moving with bees, rescued bees. So after they've been in this state, they will uh, dry out, fly up and join the colony that you've removed from the water meter or the log or whatever. So that's just a handy little hint of how to look after uh, or sort out bees. Rather than squashing them all in the honey and the pollen, uh, make the sacrifice, leave that honey at a loss and save your bees. Just before I do a little send off, one more thing is that if you put pollen and honey and structure in an enclosed bucket when you're transferring it from A to B and you don't leave a little air gap or something, what will happen is that honey starts to ferment very quickly. So don't leave your structure, your pollen, honey, everything in a bucket for more than a day because the fumes from all that will build up in the bucket and it will kill all the bees in there quickly uh, get those bees home, get the structure home, 
allow a little bit of air in there if you need to put a piece of glad wrap over the top and poke some holes in it because you don't want to release the bees yet do that but uh, that's just a little um, tip to help you uh, prevent killing bees uh, while in transit uh, before sorting them out